Hello, this is Pete, or Kenshin1913, along with... Mom. And this is another Cooking with Kenshin1913. What are we making today? We're making a gelatin ribbon dessert. Hello. Here are our ingredients. Um, some type of gelatin, mm -hmm. any flavors. And the one that we're going to be doing, because um, 4th of July is so close, we're going to be doing a red, white, and blue um layer right but you can use any flavor combination that you want and we've tried this um several times mm -hmm. so it comes out great with a lime and a lemon uh an orange and um what, what we used uh, orange and cherry, and cherry. so it, you can do any combination that you right. want of the flavors. Right. One thing I would recommend is you have to use one packet of lemon because you need that for the center layer. Right. The way that you're going to do it is you need two of one flavor, two of your other flavor, or four of, if you want to just make it, let's say, um, green and green, lime and lime, you're, you're going to have, of course, four boxes. Mm -hmm. And the yellow is for the middle. Mm -hmm. You're going to use a Cool Whip, or you can use a Whoop Cream, um, but we've always used the um, Cool Whip, and a block of cream cheese, and a can of pineapple juice. You won't be using, you won't be using all the pineapple juice. Now, the other thing that you could do, and we'll, we'll go into a little bit more with this, is um, we also had it where you can put some crushed pineapple in the middle but we seem to like the texture a little better just with the pineapple juice yeah. so what we're going to put this in is a 13 by 9 pyrex um, dish mm -hmm. and this dish comes to us from my sister because i have a smaller one yeah um and we have tried the jello in it but we only use one box on the bottom one box on the top yeah, and so you forth could, you could cut this recipe in half and, uh, right still and great. the other thing that you could do you can experiment you know there's sugar-free jello um we i don't particularly care for anything sugar-free you know if i'm going to have it i'm going to have it with the with the sugar goes for soda or anything else um, but I don't think it would cause any difference in the setup because I have seen uh, sugar-free jello set up just as as well as regular jello so we're just gonna put our jello in our bowl right and this recipe actually comes from my co-worker Judy who I used to work with uh, she has since retired but um she made this recipe, and I was not a huge Jello fan, or like any of these specific flavors of Jello. And she's like, "No, you gotta try it. You gotta try it." So I was like, "All right, whatever. Uh, I'll give it a go." And it was really, really good. So we're gonna add. You, normally, you would add one cup of water for one package yeah. of Jello. So we're just doubling it. So we're gonna have two cups of boiling water. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the uh, interesting thing about this recipe. I guess it's it's had many variations where specifically for the middle where you could use marshmallows you could use uh, you could put some nuts in it if you yeah, choose yeah, yeah, because you could put coconut in it yeah the, the melty part is they say marshmallows or you could use it's always cool whip or whipped cream or whatever and whatever and then it's like I've seen marshmallows, I've seen sour cream. We're doing with the, and it always has pineapple juice and Cool Whip. Those are the two things because that's how you get like this nice tangy, uh, sweet flavor in the middle. And yeah, so we're just gonna mix this until it dissolves. Then we're gonna pretty much do the quick set method, which that includes using six ice cubes per uh, package. But since we're we've got two, we're gonna we're gonna put twelve. Twelve, or you can put very very cold water one cup for each box of jello so we're going to add our ice cubes and as pete said um he went down to a science and it's 12 ice cubes yeah for the two boxes i mean sometimes i use more but 
Uh, I found that it's about six, seven, you know. Um, Don't go more than eight a, bo a box. This is definitely one recipe that works really well, making it the day before or very early before you have to go to some kind of event. Yeah, because it usually takes... So how it's going to work is we're going to pour this in our Pyrex dish or whatever. The reason why we're using that Pyrex dish is because it'll look nice when we're done, honestly. Otherwise, you could use whatever. And... Um, yeah, you can make the, You should make this ahead of time. Pretty much the uh, total time of making it is basically going to be maybe three and a half hours. Because you need an hour to let the, the bottom layer set. Then you need an hour and a half because it's not told, the second layer is not totally jello. Um, and you need about an hour, an hour and a half. And then the last layer is about an hour. Okay, so, so I'm going to add this to our Pyrex. Yeah, so you see all the, all the uh, ice is melted. And you're just going to gently pour it in. And you're going to stick this in the fridge. Now that we've used the quick set method, it should be ready in about an hour. Right. We're going to also let our Cool Whip um, set out for a little while because usually it's in the freezer section. Um, you can put it in your refrigerator. Yeah, you, just let it come to room temperature. And, um, and we're going to cube our um, cream, cheese. cream cheese. And we'll be back when this layer is set. Okay, so here we are. We're going to do our second layer. So we have our lemon jello. We're going to add one cup of boiling water. Now with this, with this step, with this step, we're actually going to whisk it in because we're going to be whisking in other ingredients at this point. Cube your room temperature. Uh, cream cheese which ours is right here yeah. and we're going to add a third of a cup of pineapple, pineapple juice. juice now at this point you could put in crushed pineapples if you want crushed pineapple that has been drained yeah because you only need a third of a cup of that of the liquid yeah. and yeah basically this is going to count this is going to this is going to be basically like a coolant and you're just going to whisk that in a little bit. Now you're going to throw in your um, cream cheese. Cubed up room temperature. And like I said, there's recipes for all different stuff. And you're just going to and you're just going to whisk this until creamy. My mom's got it fairly creamy. You basically want to just make it so that the all the cream cheese um, incorporates in with the right. jello and you know not, not like not and it will it'll t you know it takes a little time but because uh there's that <coughs> hot water in there um it helps to make it nice and smooth mm -hmm. but yeah i think we already mentioned that you could eat that you can make this ahead of time much further ahead of time and what else now something uh, if i remember i'll throw it in the video description so yeah, now we have our Cool Whip or our whipped cream or whipped topping, and we're just basically going to fold it in until everything is uh, until everything is uh, pretty much all fluffy. Because that's what you want. Can you use whip whipped cream? Uh, probably. I haven't really tried it that way, but we've been making this for. A couple months now and we, we, we think we're ready because I was like what is a good dessert that we can make where you don't even need to turn on the oven because it's summer you know and, and it's hot and this is a nice recipe that you don't need to you don't even have to uh, you don't have to turn on the oven you just gotta put everything in the fridge so you gotta hold that in it, it is a little tricky at first but once it starts going in, then you get, then you get it going. And once it, yeah, because this is going to be like a creamier consistency. I've seen recipes where they have added walnuts, which I'm like, no thanks. They've added, it's, well, just because like the consistency of this should be nice and creamy, and not actually, uh, you know, crunchy when you bite into it. It should just be all smooth, similar to it, like a gel. Yeah. But yeah, there's all different types of jello uh, ribbon 
you know, oh, things. Oh, yeah. They, they call it, they call it a salad. Christmas, because my uh, co-worker, she called it a Christmas ribbon salad. And it, it basically was red jello, green jello, and then in the middle was this, this uh, mixture here. Honestly, I don't remember if she used, uh... Uh, what the hell is it? Marshmallows or sour cream or whatever, but this is this is the way that I remember it with the texture. So you can see our blue jellos here. Mm -hmm. This is the middle layer. There's a little imperfection here because my dad dropped something on it, but whatever. You got a little. Whatever, it's still gonna be great. Now you have to be careful when you're putting this on uh -huh. because if you pour it quickly, you can make a hole into the jello, yeah. which you don't want. I'm gonna get um, this ladle. And we're going to put this in like this mm -hmm. so that we're not, so you can see. She's using a ladle, spreading it nice and gently. You don't want to, uh, and don't worry about the lumps, but yeah, you don't want to, I've done this before when we had it. Basically how cooking with Kenshin 1913 works, I'll let you in on a little secret, is when we have a recipe that we like and we've done it plenty, we want to make sure that we got it down, so we do something we call in the lab, right? And so what we do is we we cook it like for the next like three, four weeks or whatever, just to kind of get down what, what how it is. And on, like the second time I did this, I didn't wait for it to congeal right, and I literally had a big mess on the bottom because I just I was like, oh, it's done, it's been an hour, or whatever, and then I poured it in, and it just broke, and there were holes all over it, so. It didn't come out consistently. But yeah, after this, we're gonna put it in the fridge. Gonna let it sit for an hour to an hour and a half until it's a it's thick, similar to the you know regular Jello, and uh, then we can work on the final layer. Okay, so here is our two layers, blue and white, and I put it on a tray, which just makes it sturdier when I'm putting it back in the refrigerator because this top layer layer is going to be um i think See, it's, it's nice firm. and solid nice and, firm. and um the top layer is going to be you know liquid and i don't want to get a mess all over my refrigerator yeah that's what the test is for in the lab i made it one day and i tried putting it in and then boom bang boom whoopsie there goes jello okay the two the two cups of um i mean the two packages of Strawberry Jello. Now, as I said, you can use any flavors you like. You yeah, don't have to, you don't have to be doing it like we're doing. Yeah, you could literally use anything. The only thing you gotta keep lemon. Lemon for the middle. And it gives it a nice tang, a nice sweetie tang when you add the pineapple juice. The the lemon and the pineapple juice really complement each other. Okay, gonna add our twelve ice cubes. Yeah. Now, as I mentioned before. With the ice cubes, I've actually put in more than six. I put like 12 one time, but the pro or 10 actually. But the problem with that is when you put too many ice cubes, because they're figuring six ice cubes is probably gonna be like a half or a, a cup of water or something. But what I found is if you put too many ice cubes, sure it'll cool down your jello quick enough, and it might help quick set it, but it ends up being too liquidy, and then it takes too long for it to solidify. Believe you me, these past, I don't know, month, month and a half, I've been farting around with a lot of jello. <laughs> um, there's always room for jello. Yes, of course. <laughs> the, and I, I never used to do it with ice. I would always just do the one cup hot and the one cup cold. Yeah, I think we learned this, uh, this uh, technique from my aunt Elaine. Again, shout out to Elaine. Now, once again, my mom is going to use the ladle to pour it in just to make sure that, one, you don't put any holes in. But the second reason we're doing it is because we're very, I don't know if you can tell. All right, I'll try to zoom in here. But we're very close to the top of this thing. And I really don't want it to spill over. Although it might. Hopefully it won't. But yeah, you're just going to slowly pour it over. And then we're going to put this back in the fridge for at least an hour. And it's going to be delicious. I think, it'll, I think it'll all fit. I don't think so. You don't think so? No, it's almost to the edge on here. Yeah. So the little bit left over, I'll just have to put it in a cup. 
Yeah, and so make a little might, jello cup. <laughs> so if this is 13 by 9, you might actually get away with I, I don't know if they come any deeper. Yeah, I don't know either. But like you, like when we're doing a, a cake pan in at 13 by 9, it, it is better. it is deeper. Mm. But you have to also remember um, we just we wanted to show it. So you could yeah. put it in in that kind of a pan. Um, it just we wanted to to let people see how pretty it'll look. Yeah. And for the top, um, you could um, put more whipped cream on the top yeah. or just dollop it when you yeah. actually cut it um, apart. You get these wonderful lines in your, in your, in your jello here or in your, in your cake, your mold or whatever the hell you want to call it, dessert. They call it a salad. I've heard it called salad. I don't even know how that's even possible because, you know, the definition of salad is usually a leaf. Anyways, we're going to put this in the fridge, take it out in about an hour, be careful with it not spilling, that's why we put the pan there, and we'll come and show you what it's like. Okay, here we are. Look how nice it looks. Yeah, um, it was a good idea that we put it on the plate on this uh, mm -hmm. cookie sheet because it did spill out. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you could see how nice the yep. red, white, and blue looks. Yeah. So, let's so cut it out. now we're going to cut it. <laughs> and now this is going to be tricky. One thing that you could do in the very beginning, you could spray the bottom with a little cooking spray. That helps keep it. Um, that helps keep it. Uh, yeah. You know, Non-sticky on the bottom. So yeah, the first piece, as we've always mentioned, is the toughest piece. It's with anything. First piece of pie, first piece of cake. Come on, can we do it? Can we do it? We did yeah, it. Yeah, nice. We got ourselves a lovely piece right here, jiggling and all. All right, here is our ribbon, gelatin ribbon salad. See the different colors and how nice it looks there? So let's take a bit. We garnished it with a little whipped cream and sprinkles. Take a little bit of that, and a little bit of that right there. Not bad. Not bad, creamy. In the center you get a little bit of, a little bit of uh, that pineapple. Not my two favorites with the strawberry and the blueberry, but hey, it's jello, so it's not bad, it jiggles. And like my mom said, there's always room for jello, so this is a great Recipe to do, no, no, uh, no, uh, turn around the oven involved, right, Ma? Mm hmm. Yeah, so tasty. Mmm. And remember, you can do it with any flavors that you want. Mm hmm. So I've been Pete, or Kenshin 1913, along with Mom. This has been another cooking with Kenshin 1913. Enjoy and happy eating.